recording? <clears throat> That's a technique that we learned. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. We've got Trent here. Buddy, um, I don't even know how to describe you other than a, a massive monster of a man. But uh, we're going to get to know the real Trent moving forward here. And uh, give a quick background. D1, Virginia. Yeah. Football scholarship uh, played down there. Ended up getting drafted ninth overall CFL. I believe so. <laughs> first first round ninth overall in the uh, 2016 CFL draft. Uh, played out uh, in Winnipeg for a number of years. You got the Blue Bombers representing yeah. here, and um, we're going to talk about that, the career, and then now the transition into bodybuilding yep. and uh, everything in between there. So why don't we get, uh, why don't we get started here? Okay. Well, I think the biggest thing that people don't know about me is uh, I actually come from a, a track background. So my dad was a, a javelin thrower growing up. Yeah. Um, my father was actually born in Prince Edward Island and he, they didn't have a lot of money growing up and uh, he didn't actually have enough money to really play sports. There wasn't a lot of sports, there wasn't a lot of opportunities. But um, he somehow um, found his way into the track and field. It was his first love, and he threw javelin. And um, because he started late, um, he wasn't able to um, achieve the goals he wanted to in the sport, but he almost made the Olympics in javelin with very little experience. Wow. <clears throat> and um, he actually had me and my brother, we were throwing sticks. I'm not even kidding, at like the age of seven, eight years old, he <laughs> literally trained me to throw sticks. For, uh, wow. Like, if you can throw a stick through the point and throw it, you know, through the point and have it fly, you can throw a javelin. That's what my dad always told me. <laughs> so, like, I was bred to be a javelin thrower, and my, me and my brother, we were yeah. bred, bred to be track athletes. I have, like, multiple, like, records when I was, like, young. Like, it's nothing to yeah. brag about because no. I was, like, the only kid going to these meets. I would, I would go to these meets <laughs> when I was, like, so I have a bunch of these records, these random records. Probably because the, they saw you show up and they just yeah. all dropped out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So this was back. This is back. So everybody knows. Um, you grew up in Brockville, Ontario. Yeah. And uh, went to TIS, so Thousand Island yeah. Secondary School, and uh, obviously you excelled yeah. at track during that time. So yeah, I went into high school, and my my goal was to get a track scholarship. Yeah. I wanted to I wanted to be a javelin thrower like my dad, and I actually um, I was blessed with like. Believe it or not, you may look at me, but I was blessed with very fast twitch muscle fibers where I was actually a very good sprinter and I was a good jumper. Yeah. And I won AFSA my first year in triple jump, javelin, and I came second in discus. And um, that, Sorry, that's your grade nine? Grade nine. I, I, I um, won AFSA. Like, I was the Ontario wow. champion. Like, So, uh, Mark, what have you done with your life? <laughs> <laughs> Should I just leave now? Or <laughs> I don't think we're recording anymore over there, are we? Sorry, our video has gone down. One second. Take a second. Okay, so now we're back. So now the first three minutes of that podcast, nobody had any idea about the size of you because there's no <laughs> video. And now they're seeing that you're taking up the whole screen. <laughs> it was by design, I swear to God. Yeah, yeah. So now uh, as you're talking <laughs> about setting all these records, people are like... Oh, now we understand. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it makes sense now. <laughs> so, yeah, back to tests. So you went grade nine year where most of us are uh, trying to figure ourselves out. You're out winning offs numerous times and uh, crushing some records. Yeah. Um, so I, grade 10, I was the uh, Canadian champion in javelin throw, actually. And I broke uh, the Ontario record, which is technically – um, should be the Canadian record, but it was like on grass, so they can't like award it a Canadian record because it has to be like on the on um, a track or some no some way. BS. But uh, I threw 69 meters, like the javelin 69 meters in grade 10, and I broke the OS record by uh, 12 12 meters. Um, Jesus, <laughs> it was it, it was like it literally everything just came together. You ever have in your life where you no uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> No, no, Trent, we haven't. <laughs> oh, my God. It just came together for you and just crushed it. It just came together. Like, 
I don't know about you guys, but I'm like a, I'm a momentum athlete. Yeah. And I'm a confidence type of athlete where like yeah. once I start to gain confidence, I I I feel like I'm almost unstoppable in some sports. Like yeah. like I remember the days when I played football in high school, like I was always like scared shitless at the start of the game. But like yeah. once I got the ball and I realized I was just, you know, a little bit yeah. bigger, a little <laughs> bit faster than these guys. <laughs> once the confidence got fun. going, then I was like like started like hurling, hurdling people. I would start like stiff arm and just like the, the creative athletic nature kind of just took its place. Yeah. And um, like when it comes to sports and, and like when it came to javelin, like that first throw, like if, it, if, if I open up with a really big throw yeah. and I get the confidence and like the crowd's like, holy crap. It just like, I can feed off the crowd. I feel off the confidence. And, and even with my, uh, like my daily life, I'm a momentum person. Like the first thing I wake up, yeah. I need to build that momentum in the day or I feel yeah. really bad. Like yeah. I get really anxious. I'm an anxious person. Yeah, for sure. So like my first thing when I wake up, I need to like immediately like either make my bed or brush my teeth or do something to create the momentum. Yeah. And as I create the momentum, then I feel like I'm unstoppable. Once I get going in my day, I'm unstoppable. Well, we're we're definitely going to get into that because, <clears throat> I mean, I've known you for a long time and and uh, I was probably fascinating the the daily routine for you. So I want to definitely get into that. But let's get back to I mean grade ten. Okay. Set what should have been the Canadian record at that time. Yeah. Now, I mean, I know what you looked like back in grade 10. You were abnormally jacked. <laughs> I didn't go to school with any any kids. So genetically, I mean, you were just gifted. Your father, I, I fair to say that I was, he's got genetics. <laughs> I have good genetics, but um, I was taught at a young age that, like, if you want something, you got to make sacrifices and, like, I think a huge thing was like a lot of kids that were, you know, in grade nine, grade 10, kids start to experience with alcohol and partying. Yep. And I was just really driven. I didn't, I didn't drink at all in high school. I was focused on only one thing, which was winning, you know, yeah. track, winning OFSA. That was all I was focused on. These other kids, they were, they could, like some of these other kids, they had abilities and they had talent like me, but they just weren't as driven. And I think the biggest thing is, um, your upbringing like I'm, I'm a sociology major that's why i studied in virginia yep. Yep. and i just think that your upbringing is everything and yep. that's what helped me with the then get down transition transitioning into the football side i used to watch football with my dad and like he used to love yep. football and like i wanted to i uh make him proud so when i started playing football he put me in a flag football yep. initially i just wanted to make him proud i wanted what, to make, what grade was that uh, oh, grade. grade like 10 i uh grade sorry grade like eight i started playing flag football and um, I really fell in love with football. Yeah. Um, but I, initially, I thought I was way better at track. I was way better at track. Yeah. But um, what happened was um, my dad used, my dad took me to the gym every day before school. Every day, I yep. go before school. I would work out. I would shower, I, and then I would go to class every oh. day. <laughs> and um, what happened was um, nature kind of took its toll as I hit puberty, yeah. and as I continued going to the gym. Yeah. I literally blew up to the point where, like, I, I couldn't do track. Like, when you're throwing javelin, you got to be very mobile on your shoulder. And, I, and triple jump is, like, the hop, step, jump. Yeah. It's really hard on your joints. So, like, I hit, like, two, 210, 220. I was, like, 220 in grade 11. Jeez. So, like, I couldn't <laughs> triple jump. I was too big to triple jump, and my shoulders were too stiff to throw javelin. I was just, like, an arm thrower, and I'm, like... Wow. I'm, like, I'm meant to play football. Like, the... Um, I, my senior year, I was 240. I was playing running back at 240. And um, the biggest thing was, uh, the thing that changed my life was when I went to the Rutgers seven on seven um, football uh, passing camp. It was like this big yeah. football camp in Rutgers, okay. yeah. uh, New Jersey. And um, I went down with a couple of guys from Ottawa. I was with a club uh, uh, called uh, Gridiron Academy. Oh, yeah. yep. Victor Tadondo was the coach, and I. Um, this was uh, the this was the way to get scholarships was to go to camps and do well at these camps and get that's how you get looks. I'm my, that's when I decided I didn't want to do track and I wanted to pursue football. And believe it or not, real quickly, I actually broke my back, a bone in my back throwing javelin because I, I think it was because I was so big, and like the pounding with the triple jump and the javelin, yeah. I, I have a broken lower lumbar, like yeah. my no way my back, yeah. And I, I saw a specialist uh, in Toronto, and he told me that I'm not going to be able to reach my potential in javelin. And he said that football, believe it or not, even though it's harder on your body, it's actually less 
impactful? Impactful mm -hmm. on the spine. Now, how old were you when that happened? This was uh, like grade 11-ish. This is when I was transitioning more into football. Yeah. So like my I was really good at track in grade 9, 10, and then I transitioned more into football. So did, did your high school have a football team? We had a football team, yes. That uh, you started grade 10, was it, or grade 11? Grade, grade 9, I, I started. I oh, played. you did play grade 9, yeah, too? Yeah, I played. Yeah? And then by grade 11, you just realized that... I kind of, I, I was a late bloomer. Like, I hit puberty around grade 10, 11-ish. Yeah. And I just took yeah. off, like... Mass. I, yeah, I got a lot bigger. Like, I, uh, I think I went from probably about 5'10 to, like, 6'2". Is that right? Yeah, like, between the grade uh, 10 and 11. Wow. Wow. A and... Um, that's when I decided to go football route. I wanted to get a football scholarship grade 10. My mindset was that. I was willing to do whatever it takes. And the biggest thing, like, I, I want to point out there is, like, the, fa the fact that I – there's a lot of guys that have talent, but, like, my father really did a lot for me. Like, yeah. he would drive me to all these camps, drive me everywhere. He wanted yeah. me to – my dad literally, um, he wanted me to have all the opportunities that he didn't have. Yeah. And – um I could just feel it. Like I can, I can, I can think back to those times. I could feel how badly he wanted it for me, because he wanted it that bad. What, when you talk about your dad, I mean, a lot of people listening and, and watching, they've been in athletics, and they've played amateur or pro, and I find it more so, I would say, in stereotyping, but more so in hockey parents than necessarily football parents. I think is maybe in Canada we have a mm. bigger drive for pushing our kids for hockey. Uh, but there's also a very, uh, what I would say can also be a very unhealthy um, f drive by parents pushing yeah. their kids. What, what was it like in the moment and then growing up and now as a, an adult, what do, you, what do you kind of take back from what your dad did? Your dad gave up yeah. and sacrificed a lot for yeah. you. I know that. But, but what would you say looking back at that? Yeah, that's a really good. Uh, I'm really happy you brought that up because I can I can hear I, I can see that people may think that it, it may have been it may have been too much, but um, I need to verify that um, he took me to the gym every day before school. He 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 didn't force me. I wanted to do it. I didn't. I didn't I'm not gonna lie. I didn't like it for the first yeah, yeah. bit. Yeah. But I'm not gonna lie. As I started seeing progress within the first month, he never had to take me again. Like it was, I could, I was hooked. I was yeah. addicted within a month of, of training, yeah. and he never had to tell me to work out or train ever again. Like, I wanted this. I just needed the guidance. Some people, they yeah. just have the burning passion inside them, and they just need that little push, okay. and that's what he did. He gave me the guidance. But there, you are right. There are tons of parents out there that um, they go too far with it. Like, at the end of the day, like, if my kid yeah. doesn't want to throw javelin or play football, like, I, I'm not going to – force him to do it yeah I'm gonna tell him like you should try it and, and see if you like it I'm never yeah. gonna force my kids to do anything and he never forced me to do anything he just yeah. he knew I had the he knew I had the passion and he knew I had a talent and he wanted me to maximize that talent and get the most yeah. out of it and I'm still doing that today well especially I guess at him being a high level himself of, of athletics he I mean he certainly saw potential yeah. at a very young age for you which you wouldn't have seen at that age yeah. you wouldn't have had a clue what javelin was Know? so he yeah. introduced that to you as well right um no it's important that yeah i think that we we uh we let people know about the it, it wasn't an unhealthy yeah push it's uh it's something that certainly um i mean i can attest to it it's still instilled in you to this day yeah where you're probably one of the most chill guys that i know but if I put a, a dumbbell or football in front of you, <laughs> I, I just step back. <laughs> I, uh, it's almost like for you, there's a switch that, of this intensity that happens. Yeah. Right? Um, I think it comes from a hum being humble growing up, like your parents, the way you're raised. Like you see how your parents yeah. act and you kind of act that way too. And I've been humbled many times in my life. Like, yes, I'm a good yeah. athlete, but I've been – I've been across many good athletes, and yeah. and I realized that just because you're talented physically, like it doesn't mean shit. There's so many guys out there, yeah. and my, yeah. one of the reasons why I love bodybuilding so much is just the mindset. Like I, I honestly feel like a lot of people could do really well in bodybuilding. Like if you work long and hard enough, like if I if I was to find like a a dude with decent genetics on the street, yep. and give him like 15 years of training, yeah, maybe give him some 
extra special multivitamins too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, I really feel like um, like he could do really well. Could achieve and, something. And when it comes to body even like, I feel like it's really like the mindset's the most important thing and just being disciplined. For sure. What, when you look at, so you, I mean, getting competitive with football then by grade 11. Grade 10, you decided that football was the, the root grade 11. You really got serious about it. You moved forward with, uh, with football and pursued it more, took it really serious. Then you get into your grade 12 year. Grade 12 year, by this time you've, you're getting scholarship. Yeah. Uh, you're getting, sorry, scouts around. Yeah. Scouts are looking around and then scholarships. What, what was that like for you? you? I know your dad at the time was taking to a lot of camps and getting you a lot of exposure. Yeah. And then where did... How did that translate with the scouting that happened with you? Because you, you had a lot of eyes on you for, for post-secondary yeah. for university football. So one, one cool thing I like to point out is like that, that Rutgers camp, that's when I really blew up. Like I performed really well. I actually played a receiver there. I was a receiver. And uh, like I was labeled as like just an athlete. Like I can just do, do whatever they, they want me to do. But I, was, I played receiver. And believe it or not, um, like in one of the final games, we played. Um, a, I don't know. I don't know if you guys watch a lot of NFL, but we played against a, a team that who had Stefan Diggs on there. Oh yeah. And yep. I was actually like covering Stefan Diggs, and like oh, wow. I got I intercepted the ball. The quarterback kind of threw it. It wasn't like a catchable ball ball for him, but like he kind of it was a bad ball. And I intercepted the ball in overtime, and we beat like Stefan Diggs' team, and like now he's <laughs> like arguably top three best receiver in the NFL, and it was like. Yeah. At that time, he was, I think he was like a five-star recruit, like big-time recruit, and just, t t that was like kind of my showing out party. He was like, wow, like this guy is like some random Canadian kid. Wow. Like this guy's here. Like he's he's not a, like a joke. He's he's actually here, and he's he's trying to, you know, do something. Was that that moment for you that just gave you that next-level confidence? Yeah, it definitely was. was. Um, so how old would you have been then? I was grade 12. Grade 12 year. Grade so. 12, Yeah. So you had already had some scouting happen. Yeah. So the way it works for football, I don't want to get too far into it, yeah. but um, you you should go to camps like grade ten, grade eleven, and what happens is you get interests. And the way you get turn the interest to scholarships is usually through tape. Like no one's yeah. like at the end of the day, it's football. Like they want to see how you perform with pads on on the football field. Yeah. Like it doesn't matter. Um, it doesn't matter what you can do with the, like on a combine like your four yard dash, like it, it helps, but like yeah. at the end of the day is they want to see the, the good tape. So I got some looks at the camp and then I started making, turning those looks to, to uh, offers based off of my tape, even though my tape was kind of crap because it was out of Canada and it's not as legit, legit. Yeah. Like yeah. if you're playing against uh, like in Texas, like if I'm, I was playing Texas in Texas and I had like, I was destroying those guys, like I had good yeah. tape in Texas, you can get tons of offers, but like we're still, like at a position now where like your tape Canadian tape is not the same as American tape for football. So, so who was doing those tapes for you then? <clears throat> so this this is gonna sound kind of hardcore, but I was um, so I was playing um, Sooners Ottawa Sooners, yeah. and I was playing high school. And sometimes I would have two games in the same day. And um, wow, I got my looks and my scholarship looks from playing Sooners Ottawa Sooners, like just here. Yeah, and um, they got they did tape for me and. Um, yeah, I remember I used to play like, I was like 17 playing with like, at that time there was, I think the age cap was like 26. 20, or, yeah, I was going to say 20 something. I don't know, 20 something. I was playing against yeah. grown men when I was like 17 playing two games and I won like a uh, rookie defensive player of the year and I only played half the games, the Sooners. <laughs> was your beard better than theirs though? <laughs> I had no beard. I barely had pubes. I picture you with this big, massive beard coming on the field. No, I, I didn't. Someone thinks a father's on this field playing. <laughs> I barely had armpit hair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you um, were three and a half feet wide. <laughs> yeah, I was like 240. 240. But I was like athletic looking 240. Like now I just look yeah. like a, just a. Well, you're like, what, three, I don't, 10? Around there, yeah. Yeah, six three three ten. So, yeah, <laughs> a little bit bigger now. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, playing Ottawa Sooners, I, I'm. I mean, I'm very familiar. You are you at all familiar with Ottawa Sooners? The I'm, I'm familiar with. Some, but yeah. yeah. So they they actually have a just down from our clinic here. They're uh, they have a dome, and all the uh, a lot of the kids 
a lot of the youth that play there, they'll come in here for treatments and yeah. do all their recovery, right? So, um, so what did, as you were going through that then, Trent, what was the, you have an opportunity now for scholarships. What scholarships came forth for you? Um, the first was the University of Buffalo. Yeah. And um, looking back at it, I wish I would have took Buffalo. Because the way it works is, so Buffalo is a, a Division One. I, I think it's double A. So it's not like a big time Division One. Yeah. But it's a Division One. But back at, back then, I think my ego got a little the best of me because I felt like I could go to any school and just start right away. And um, it's a lot more complicated than that. There's politics and there's different rules, Canadian rules versus co college football rules. There's a little bit, little bit of transition. The rules aren't the same. Like at eligibility, you mean? Is that what you're referring to? No, I, so there's more people. Like the Canadian game, there's more people in the field. It's a bigger field. Oh, sorry. There's motion. Yes. You're Our balls are bigger. Ball. Our balls are bigger. Yeah. So that's a big one. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. <laughs> Go Canada. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Wait, should Wait. I do a... <laughs> <laughs> did you guys play football? I did. There's no football team where I came oh, from. Oh, no, it. yeah. No, he was. He's way up north. Way where? Uh, Capus Skating, Ontario. Yeah. Where is that? <laughs> exactly. I, I, I'm more of Russia and Ontario. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, if the Russians invade, they're yeah. invading Capus Skating, <laughs> Ontario, and from there they invade the rest of the country. <laughs> if they get past Cap, they're <laughs> <laughs> they'll probably all die on the highway on their way up. Yeah, it's yeah. not good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. It's. Uh, I'm a diehard football guy myself but yeah i uh yeah i certainly didn't uh i didn't get to the level that you did i certainly wasn't there but <laughs> i still love it still watch it um so you had buffalo you had university of buffalo yeah and then, and then i then, uh university of virginia um i had some other like d1 double a schools and like late like very late in the process university of uh Georgia wanted me to play like linebacker there. Oh yeah. Late. Like this was after I could like committed to Virginia and um like they were like the best team right now. So Yeah. I, yeah. I just wanted to throw yeah. that there. My dream school was Stanford. I wanted to go to Stanford. I really wanted to go there really bad. And they actually wanted me, but guess what? No way. Your your guy is not really the smartest guy. Like I may be I may have had the physical <laughs> abilities, but my SAT score was trash. I mean, that's, oh, no. what, that's what I was gonna say. So you're going to the states, so those that don't that don't know that are listening right now. I mean, in America, you have to complete your SAT scores yeah. by your uh, was it mid mid grade twelve? Yeah, you're what seventeen years old. Yeah, have to do your SATs. And do you mind me asking what yours was? I think it was sixteen. So sixteen. What did Stanford? I think want? they wanted me to get like two thousand. Sorry. What? Wait. Like, I don't know. I, 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 it's like 1600, you mean? 1600. And then 2000s yeah, yeah, yeah. That would make sense. Yeah. 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 2000s, yeah. what Stanford? Yeah. I think they wanted me, like, I'm the type of guy where, like, I'm, oh. I process things slow. Yeah. And when it comes to the SAT, you don't want that. It's, everything's it's you gotta, quick. It's quick. You don't, yeah. it's time. Like, and a lot of times people yeah. don't answer all the questions. And if you answer it wrong, you lose points, right? Yes. Mm. Yeah. So, like, I'm a very slow, like, when mm. I, my whole life, I've always been, like, one of the last people to finish tests. <laughs> and, like, everyone's always thought I was this, like, yeah. not the brightest <laughs> because I was so slow. But I was – I always did well in, in tests. I had a – I was Ontario Scholar in high school. Yeah. Like, yeah. I was – I actually did well in school. So that's – I mean, that's a good point. So, I mean, testing, we all, we all know that testing, educational testing around the world, I mean, um, it, it can be very frustrating because it's – it is very much geared in many ways to one mm. particular learning style or yeah. one particular yeah. processing style, if you will. And so then all of a sudden you get individuals like yourself that that do take more time. Yeah. They're 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 analyzing every word of that sentence. Yeah. Um, so so you get sixteen, you have these scholarship offers. Eagle got the best of you because Virginia was the school. 
So looking yeah, back. if you guys know much about uh, University of Virginia, uh, found like Thomas Jefferson was a founder. Um, it's a very expensive school. I think it's like sixty thousand dollars to go there like, as an international student. Um, it's a very beautiful architecture, like Rome-like architecture. Yeah. Super beautiful campus. Like a lot of their sports teams, they do really well. Like we have, they win a lot of national championships in like a lot of different sports. Yeah. The football team at the time was ranked the, the pre previous year. The coach. Um, one ACC coach of the year. So everything was just like look perfect, like on book. Yeah. But you want to know what? It wasn't looking back on it. I have no regrets in life, but yeah. it wasn't the best decision. You want to know why? It was because uh, if I went, went, went to Buffalo, I would have played right away and I would have, because I'm a I'm very raw football player. I came from playing like in front of like 5,000 people with very limited coaching. I had very limited experience. So a kid right. who has talent, who's raw, you, you want to get as much playing experience as possible. If yeah. I went to the Buffalo, I probably would have played right away. I would have got better after year after year. And yeah. then by the senior year, I would have been way more polished as a football player. Opposed to Virginia, I didn't start until my final year. I worked so hard. I didn't start yeah. until my final year. I played special teams, special teams. And I didn't start until my final year. So I only had one year of playing experience. Yeah. And um, at the end of the day, like, the only way to get better at something is, is to do it. Like, you um, like you're talking about ju ju uh, jujitsu, right? Yeah. Like you can roll as much as you want on the mats, but like you said, you want to do actual competitions. That's what's going to bring out the best in you. Yeah. Not just doing the practices when you're actually like scared that someone might break your arm, like actually in the heat of battle, that's when you're actually going to get better. And it's the same yeah. with, um, with football. With I needed football. more playing experience and I wish I would have went to Buffalo. But my yeah. ego got the best of me because it was like all these like, you know, coach of the year, ranked school, yeah. like Thomas Jefferson founder, like beautiful campus, blah, blah, blah. Was your, a couple of things here. First of all, I guess we should acknowledge talking about jujitsu, your recent accomplishment. Yeah. So uh, by that? the time this podcast airs, I will have gotten my black belt. It's taken me about six years to achieve. Damn. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty excited about that, yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's the beef of the show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love Congratulations, it. man. That's Thank awesome. you so much. That's a, a hell of an accomplishment for sure. I appreciate that. Congratulations. Um, yeah, that's, that's huge. And uh, so when we're talking about football for you and we're talking about those scholarships, were the scholarships across the board? I mean, all of those universities have different like you said, sixty plus thousand dollars for some; yeah. others are, are cheaper. Um, and then, of course, you have Stanford that's going to be significantly more. Yeah, were all of your scholarships pretty much the same? And if so, what were the scholarship offers themselves? Was it a, was it a set dollar amount? Was it you achieved this um, grade point average, mm. and then we give you this much money, etc.? How did, how did that work for you? What was the breakdown on that? All right, so the way it works for football scholarships, it's different for different sports, but for football scholarships, there's only full scholarships. Full. In, for Division One football, it's only full. Like, there's no such thing as a half. Okay. They have a bunch of, like, there's, for people who don't know much about Division One football, it's absolutely mind-blowing how much money there is yeah. in college. Like, my coach was making, like, over $2 million, I think, a year to coach us. <laughs> like, it's wow. crazy. The amount of money... Wow. They have. Wow. I remember, like, my position coach who was, like, literally coaching, like, maybe eight guys, eight, like, eight defensive ends, yeah. was making, like, 500000 Just to, like, you have, like, eight dudes in the room, and you're making, like, $500,000. It's crazy. The amount of money is just mind-blowing. So, so what, was the, what was the commitment then when we're talking about there's eight guys in the room, your, um, your defensive ends, which is what you ended up. Yeah. playing so you have so that coach like what was what was your actual commitment to the school then when you get that scholarship is it day and night that you're training watching video learning the position like kind of walk us through what that looks like because i think that's not something that most people listening will never experience and most never have experienced that yeah when it comes to someone like when, when it comes to someone saying like, oh, like I just don't have time for this, I don't have time for that, or like 
it's kind of a bad example where I'll like I'll, <laughs> I'll be talking to a girl, I'll try to hang out with a girl, and she'll be like, oh, I'm just so busy, you know, I'm just so busy. And I always <laughs> like, like, hell no, you're not like you're not that busy. Like when you're a student athlete, that is it will not get more busy than that. And I still was making time to I went to the gym on my own in, in the evenings on oh, yeah? top of working out with the team. Um, so like an average day I would wake up like five, five thirty AM, go yeah. practice with and uh, so first we do meetings. We do a bunch of meetings, like three or four meetings. Then we practice. Then we lift. Then I go to class all day. Come back, more meetings, and then afterwards I would go to the gym, the like student gym, and then when I come back, it'd be like time to go to sleep. Like what, literally the whole day was every day. It was what, like that. What time would you get to bed at then? Uh, I try to get to bed around ten ish, like because you gotta wake up at like five ish. Wow. We had this like. Uh, and we were kind of far from the campus. We had this, uh, it's called Safe Ride. Like, yeah. there's this, uh, there was these vehicles that would, like, pick people up. Like, it was, supposed, it was meant for people who are, like, drinking on yeah. campus. Like, to go out and drinking. You just, like, Safe Ride. Yeah. We would call, like, Safe Ride, and then we'd take a bunch of players, like, to the campus. Like, we were, as a freshman, because we didn't have vehicles and, like. To go uh, train. Yeah, to go train. <laughs> people are going out drinking, and yeah. these guys are taking Safe Ride to yeah. get to the gym. <laughs> I just, <laughs> I, I love it. I remember, um, <laughs> I remember a couple of people were like, like, are you sure you're ready for division one football? Like, it's like, these guys are savages. Like some of the guys you play with, like they yeah. come from nothing and they're willing to like kill yeah. to, for that position. And like the coaching is just so intense and like everything you could imagine. It was, it was literally like that. Yeah. And it was like, <laughs> looking back to it, it was just like pretty extreme. Like bef- I remember there was like, <laughs> The, the, the strength coach right before I got there, apparently he was like giving people, he would give people like hot milk, like, it, like at the end, of, like in between and like at the end, like they had just like, they had like a lot of these strength coaches, they have like weird philosophies. <laughs> like they would give like hot milk. It's supposed to like, you're supposed to like, uh, you would take in the protein faster because like hot milk. What? And then like when I was uh, the nutritionist, we, we would do beet juice. We used to do beet oh, yeah. juice like before and after, which I actually think works, but yeah. it's like, like how much is it really doing? Like they were obsessed with like beet juice. Like we, we, we uh, before we go play games or if, like go go practice. Like get your beet juice. Like like they like the people, like coaches would get like pissed at you if you didn't like drink the beet juice. Like the little cup of beet juice. Wow. And it's like That's like intense. it was gonna like ch- make the difference between like <clears throat> making the tackle or not. Yeah, yeah. I everything about Division One football was just like too much. Like at the end of the day, I just wanted to play football. Yeah. Everything was just overhyped. We had like a Wahoo walk. Our mascot was like a called like Wahoo or some some weird thing. Yeah. We do like a traditional walk. We like walk around campus before we like go in the field. We get there like three hours before. We do like some guys would do like three warm ups before we play. Like uh, we do like the Wahoo walk. We like high five in the fans, and then there we'd have a schedule like the day of the game like down to a T. Where all I want to do was to sleep in and show up and play. Yeah. There's times like in high school I would like <laughs> sleep in. And like one time I like barely made it like before kickoff. Like I was running on with like my pants barely on. Like like wall was about to be snapped. And I was just like <laughs> ran out there, scored like f- five touchdowns. <laughs> that's, that's that was me in high school. And then like this, literally they wake up like, up like early to do like meetings and like do walkthroughs and all this, like day of the game. And like I just don't want to sleep. So what was when you're talking about that Wahoo walk and, and all that, did you have any pregame rituals yourself? No. Like dirty trunks? <laughs> like I'm never showered. No, like I don't I don't, don't like that. I don't like leaving that stuff. No? no. So that being said, then on your team there definitely was some There's definitely guys like guys that were like doing crazy shit. What what, what do you remember any of those? <laughs> We had this one guy who used to headbutt his locker before we go out there. And I'm not even kidding. One guy, he headbutt his head so hard that uh, he started bleeding everywhere, and he couldn't, he couldn't play. He literally couldn't even play. They had to stitch him up. He couldn't even play in the game. And I, I'm never, terrible. I'm never going to forget. I'm never going to forget how it went down. So he was, he was so pumped. He was so pumped. He started headbutting, and uh, he was going crazy. And all of a sudden, his like, loud, like, roaring headbutting went to like a whimpering. No, as it, as the ble- blood started going down his face, and he realized like sh- like shit, like I probably can't go out there now. And then like yeah, I just <laughs> never seen him. I just I never seen him like walk to the back with the trainers, and I just never seen him out there. I was out there on kickoff, like looking, <laughs> and he just wasn't out there. 
<laughs> I think it's fair to say that he watched the program. Yeah. Before uh, what's his name? Uh, <laughs> before oh, Latimer. Latimer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> I love that movie, Latimer. <laughs> I, I, Isn't that what he did? He was, yeah. Him, it did the, make it. He take the helmet and smash his head. Yeah. You remember the clip of him, like, he was shoulder pressing 315? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he like, throws it down and kicks it. <laughs> like, my whole, like, year, when I was in college, like, I wanted to shoulder press 315 for reps so bad like that. It's like, so easy. And, like, I never could do it. But, like, now I can. But now you can. <laughs> but, uh, uh, I mean. Do they look at you funny in good life when you do that and you throw it down and you kick it? <laughs> nobody gets the, <laughs> nobody gets the joke. <laughs> I'll probably get kicked out of the gym. <laughs> Yeah. Band for life. You got the guy with his like rubber band elastic workout. <laughs> Someone's doing Jane Fonda workout in the corner, and Trent walks in. <laughs> Three fifteen throws it down. The I'm guy gets home. steamrolled by the I'm weights. <laughs> the guy shadow box in the corner sees that, and he's like, "Go shatter box on the other side." <laughs> the shadow gym boxers. I can't do it. I can't do it. Oh, that's amazing. So, yeah. So that's a pretty. Uh, I don't know, fair to say stupid <laughs> ritual before to uh, before you play in D1 football. Wait, wait, I had one ritual. Like, What's that? I did smelling. I would do smelling salts before kickoff. I, oh, really, wow. fe- I really feel like that shit helps. Oh, yeah. Like, well, it, it gets your nervous system. Oh, yeah. Like, it just makes you focus. Like, it's like quick smelling salt. And, like, I got to the point where, like, I could, like, almost, I was, like, just, like, putting that sh- shit up my nostril. <laughs> Norton I, like, snorting it. I was, like, <laughs> Jesus <laughs> You do it every game. Eventually, it's like you got a little something under your nose. Like, yeah, yeah. Smelly salts. Yeah, I know. <laughs> How intense! Oh my god, <laughs> that's amazing. I open the bottle and I just about oh. pass out. Jeez. <laughs> that's like nothing though. I've heard of like many stories of like yeah. from from friends of like guys doing like hard drugs before games. Oh no way! Yeah, Ooh. like Ooh. like D one stuff or like pro, like pro, like no. cocaine before games and stuff. Yikes. Just getting, that was crazy. <laughs> you, oh, Jesus. Nah, I remember when I was in college, and I'll never forget to this day, they were talking about drug use. And yeah, yeah. They showed yeah. us a picture, two of them. One of them was a pair of chewed handcuffs, and oh, the yeah. guy actually chewed through the handcuffs to get out of the car. Oh, <laughs> like, I was like, and they're like, and that is cocaine. I was like, Jesus. I got to try it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm outside looking for my smelling yeah, salts. I, <laughs> I can be Superman for real. <laughs> so, so, Jesus. <laughs> That's wild. I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, I don't know what the... So, I mean, a good question then leading to that was that D1, what's the... Drug testing? The drug testing like. D1 was... They tested way more than they did like when I played in the CFL. Yeah. They test a lot. But they... For some reason, like at that time, they were really against like marijuana. We had a bunch yeah. of guys that would like love marijuana, yeah. And like we had a bunch of guys that kicked off the team for for being caught, uh, like being tested positive for marijuana. Kicked right off the team, yeah. So scholarships gone, yeah. They and they failed multiple times, but like <laughs> thinking back to it, how silly is that? It's ridiculous. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. marijuana has no benefit to the game yeah. whatsoever. <laughs> They were the chillest guy on the Other team. Other than you may, <laughs> maybe won't be smashing your head into the locker. I'm assuming yeah, yeah, he yeah. wasn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that guy should have. <laughs> maybe he needed the marijuana. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, I couldn't imagine smoking marijuana and playing football. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> I'd be I sit, wonder. I'd be sitting in the corner eating bonbons and watching Oprah. <laughs> <laughs> there's oh, a, I Mike, there's s- a game on. Um, yeah. <laughs> I think you should start the marijuana league. I don't know. Somebody, somebody do this, please. <laughs> <laughs> That's wild. Oh man, so so fair to say that yeah, you're saying that there's a lot lot more for for um, D1, yeah, for that. And I don't know if you guys have ever been drug tested, but like I, I have to bring this up, uh, like the drug testing, um, it's just like the weirdest experience ever. <laughs> like you the mean weirdest. being in the open. So like my first few years, they didn't do this. They would just be like drop your pants, and they would like kind of yeah. like just like look from afar yeah but eventually like near my last year and then when i got in the cfl like i don't know if, if dudes were finding out ways of of cheating it without yeah. th- them seeing like you, you do it but like it got to the point where like the, the dude's head was really like in front of me no and, like inspecting it <laughs> it's almost <laughs> like terrible. it was almost like i couldn't pee i'm I, not i'm not i get, sta- I, I get stage fright <laughs> I, I, I couldn't like 
It's like I have a hard time with they like gums right beside you in the urinal. There's like five empty spots. I'm like, bro, he can smell his I breath. was working here. I got now you find you go and then I'll finish. Oh my god. That's amazing. I remember like the one time I was like, like, are you impressed? <laughs> like, like, no, like I what you see, that. bro? I didn't say that. I didn't say that. No. That'd be even we- more weird. I'd yeah, probably pirate. ask him. I'd be like, do you want me to like buy you dinner? Yeah, or? yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so get the pleasantries aside first. Do you take me out for dinner now? Like what happens here? <laughs> are we dating? Is this, is this serious? Is this a thing? <laughs> it's just such a weird experience. But I mean, <clears throat> I mean, I guess I, 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 I've heard of guys using mm-hmm. like fake you know what to like oh oh i hey if you say if you say the word uh penis i can i can go <laughs> when you say it oh okay so <laughs> you got the fu- finger on the trigger yeah i'm, re- I'm ready <laughs> i think they get the point though. they have fake what <laughs> <laughs> you just want you to really want to hit listen we button. just got this really cool thing so we want to be able to use the buttons here <laughs> you, you, you do it for yourself <laughs> so trent had had a fake to pass the test (laughs) yeah 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 yeah, to pass the test (laughs) listen Uh, in listen in if you want to find out (laughs) so so d1 they're doing all the testing guys are getting canned like full scholarships gone over marijuana use yeah and what was it like being the d1 football player on campus and tell us some stories because I know, there's, I know so, there's a lot. I know you guys want me to be like, yo, like I was a god. No, no, no. <laughs> but like the basketball team was the, the like the big men on campus. Like we, yeah. a couple of years ago, our, our team won the national championship, March Madness. Like, yeah, yeah. Like the f- basketball guys were like the the most popular guys on ca- on campus in terms of athletes. We were yeah. still like recognized and and had uh, some privileges. What would those be? Uh, like a lot of times we'd kind of skip lines of cl- like bars and clubs and yeah. I I always told people it was like an icebreaker. Like if you're if you're meeting someone, it's like oh like I play football or like oh you're the football guy. Like it immediately like kind of breaks the ice and like yeah. I find it's it's a really easy way in a conversation. Automatically they're gonna you know give you a little bit of uh, recognition, a little bit of value there. Um, it's a really good icebreaker. Like you were like at a bar, you're talking to a girl. Like yeah, like yeah. you know, I play football for the team. Like it'd be like, oh wow, that's cool. Like, but it's, it's not like it's not like what you think it is. Like in movies and stuff. Like you, you're not gonna just like yeah, I'm a football player, and then it's like you take her home. Like it's <laughs> it doesn't work like that. Like it's, it's the more, panties just fall off. Yeah, it's, you gotta you gotta be able. To, it's more of an icebreaker. It's like it's it's a conversation starter, and it's it's a. I'm trying to think of the and the best thing. The best thing about being an athlete was we had our own meal hall, and they would make okay. us like the best food. They'd make us like steak, like medium rare steak, and we'd go there and we we could take like a to go box. Oh, here's a funny story. Virginia actually literally made a rule um, because uh, I used to abuse absolutely. I, I always chose the meal plan. I love going to meal halls, and um, I used to absolutely abuse the. Uh, the the uh, my meal plan like abuse it to the yeah. point where like it was like that thing back to on it was disgusting i would go there and i bring like eight to go boxes <laughs> and i go there and i just take all the food and there'd be like people behind me i would just take it all and i would leave with like eight to go boxes i put it in my fridge and i i snack on them at night literally <laughs> like every time i would do that there'd be like like so people would be complaining and stuff but I was yeah. like, I didn't think too much of it. I was just hungry. Like I would legit eat all the food. No, nobody questioned you either, did they? No, no one. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> but well, leave, leave, but I'm not even kidding. Ahead. I went there like the yeah. next week, and the lady's like, "Yep, yeah, you won't be doing that anymore." <laughs> she was like, "You won't be doing that anymore." <laughs> I'm like, "What?" She's like, "You're only allowed one to go box." It, it, it kind of reminds <laughs> me of it reminds me of I don't know, maybe two months ago. Uh, Trent and I went out to uh, an all-you-can-eat yeah. <laughs> restaurant. Oh, my God. So the two of us walk Mandarin. into this restaurant. <laughs> I can see them closing the doors <laughs> as he's showing up. It's so funny to watch basically this massive, triple the size of anybody else that was there, walk into the room, and people are just doing this and walking up, and the plates are the size of his hands, and he's loading up. And the poor w- woman serving us, I was 
I was sure she was going to at one point probably kick us out. Fold it in. Yeah, the, yeah. Time out. You're not only allowed 18 plates. Stop. No. It's like <laughs> we, how, I think we did close to 10. We did. Uh, yeah, yeah, we did a lot of plates. Are yeah. you joking? Yeah, yeah, 10, you were keeping up with me. He geez. was. He was keeping up with me. 10 plates. <laughs> yes, we actually did. Like it was. I'm not even kidding. It was like like eight or nine plates. Yeah. And we're talking about like oh they were healthy. They were the big f- portions. Yeah. So we did like three rounds of dessert. (laughs) Yeah. Is this at Mandarin over here? Yeah. Mandarin. Oh my God. Love Mandarin. Yeah. I walk in, I'm 6'2, I'm 280. He walks in 6'3, 310. And uh, they put us at this this tiny table oh my kind God. of in the corner. I'm pretty sure that they were trying to just exhaust us by putting us out in the corner oh, so yeah. that we had a further walk yeah. to get to the trays. <laughs> <laughs> we get there, load up, kept going back. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. But it was good. Really good. It was really good. <laughs> oh, man. The, those shrimp, those little shrimp, whatever, fried shrimp. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So good. yeah. Shrimp tempura. <laughs> shrimp yeah. tempura. Yeah, yeah, so for good. sure. Well, well, I think a good... I, I know what you're talking about when you're saying about taking the, sh- the steak because there they cut up that steak. Yeah. And when you discovered that, you probably had flashbacks of it because you enjoyed the steak yeah. that oh, night too. <laughs> I mean, think about how expensive steak is. Yeah. Like, having a buffet-style steak, you know how much money you can like wor- money's worth you get from that? If I eat like, a couple of steaks, that's like over $100 worth of food. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You're going for value, bud. Yeah. I mean, I'm eating like... Dollars. They... They certainly lost money that night. I can guarantee it. I'm not even kidding. I ate that sushi one time, yeah. and like, you know how they have the iPads? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. And like, yeah, if yeah. you look down, it actually says like how much it would how cost. Do? Oh yeah. And the shit was like 400 bucks. I ate like 400 dollars <laughs> worth of sushi. You look down, and it says like the S- the price <laughs> if you were to buy it individually, like 400 bucks. Oh my god, that's amazing. The so so they changed the policy at Virginia. Yeah. So everybody listening from Virginia, you can. Take your boy, try to hear that. <laughs> Why you're like not allowed one, to? You only take like you can only take like one toe box. <laughs> <laughs> and so, so you're in your final year, your senior year. You okay. are playing now. You're yeah. uh, you're starting, right? Yeah. So you're starting. You have um, how many games that that uh, in that season? Um, like pre playoff, you had. Those are like eight to ten games. I don't know. Ten? Okay. Ten. Um, so you have a good year. So my first career game, I'm not even kidding, yeah. we were wearing all white, and guess where we were playing? Rolls Bowl Stadium against UCLA. My first career start. I went up there all white, ran in the tunnel. Wow. Guess what? Back of my pants, completely brown. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> shat my pants. <laughs> you shit your pants the first, first game. game. <laughs> Are you, are, you, are you joking? Or yeah, I'm kidding. <laughs> okay. I was like, <laughs> is this for real? No, is I was this like, on the internet somewhere? I was, I was like, I, I was in the state of mind where like, I basically you were going did, to. I basically did. Yeah. Like, mentally, I shut my pants. <laughs> <laughs> I was playing in front of like 60,000 people at the Rolls Bowl Stadium and, and wow. uh, like one of the, probably, probably the most famous football stadium. Oh, yeah. We were playing yeah. against uh, like a quarterback that was projected to be number one overall pick, like Rosen or whatever. He's in the NFL still. And it was my first career start, and like, wow! I was just like, I actually had uh, like eight tackles that game. Uh, we lost yeah. the game, but it was just like, ma- my dad went to the game. Oh yeah, and it was like amazing, just absolute amazing experience. Like I gave my, because I played in there. Like my dad went up there with our, our family, and they had a trip in California, and then went and saw me play. Like he was so proud. Wow! So, do they do anything for? The parents of the athletes, uh, like any perks for them, free tickets, just the tickets, tickets. Yeah, yeah. I mean we t- we take a private plane to, to all the games. Private plane. So <laughs> like, obviously like, a revamped. Like think about this. Like <laughs> when I played in the CFL, we didn't get a private plane. Yeah. yeah. The Division One football private plane. Like there's just the money in the difference is insane. How much money there is in NCAA football? It's mind blowing. Well, your first game. You would never have seen those numbers in any of your CFL games. No, you're not. You're not. It's not even a possibility. You can't hit sixty plus thousand people. I went from playing in front of like ten people in high school to like sixty thousand. <laughs> wow, that's wild. <laughs> that is wild. So what's that like coming out to that? It's like 
it's uh, it's it's like overwhelming. Like you just don't, like the motions are crazy when you're running out of the tunnel. Like I remember a couple of games, I got to run out of the tunnel with the flag. Oh yeah, and uh, American flag or the Virginia flag, and um, the adrenaline is like crazy. So like, <laughs> listen to this. You guys want to hear a good story? My first career snap in in the in the Division One football. Yeah. Um. So the coaches like. I was like, uh, the coaches thought I was like a monster when they first met me. Like physically, I was like, as a freshman, I was like unheard of how physically developed I was yeah. as a freshman. And they, they wanted me to go on special teams. And they were like, yeah, I just want you to destroy the first guy you see. And I, I'm, I was always been the type of person where like, I just, like I'm a coachable athlete. I was like, do whatever yeah. the coach says. Looking back on this, I shouldn't have done this. <laughs> but um, ran down there full speed. We were playing um, uh, Richmond, Richmond. And um, ran in on full speed. Um, first guy I saw, full speed, ran him completely over, like knocked him out unconscious. <laughs> and then I kept going. It was a touchback, so it was for nothing. Oh, no. I went on the sidelines. I hit him so hard that when I went on the sidelines, I, like, started to get dizzy. And, and this is, this is like, this, this was basically the start of the end. This is, like, the first. Yep. This is basically the start of how my football career en eventually ended. Yeah, we're and, gonna talk about that for sure. Um, my, when I get concussions, I, my, I don't get my like, bad headaches. I, my, my, I lose my vision. It's yeah. weird. Yeah. And I, all of a sudden, I started noticing I couldn't really see right, and like I couldn't really like read the scoreboard or anything. So and then I, I went out there for like the next kickoff, just running down there like blind. And I'm like, I went to the trainer and the next play. I'm like, yeah, like I can't really see. And they're like, when it comes to concussions, like anything there they take you to the game so like i played two snaps my first game like knocked that dude out and concussed myself and that was the that was my first <laughs> game oh my God. you hit him so hard that you almost knocked yourself out yeah i literally just ran him completely over like it, it, it i i was it didn't even slow me down as, at all like it was just like my mic is uh, oh there it is yeah, good now. Sorry. Sorry. Um, sorry about that so this was the beginning of the end though yeah yeah. Like it. So let's let's we're gonna we're definitely gonna get that. That's a that's a big part here. So um, that reminds me of a kid that I I had uh, coached here in in Ottawa. He actually he played Sooners as well, but he he was playing middle linebacker, and this kid swept out to the outside, and this kid his name's Owen comes running full bore at him. Throws them in through into the into the crowd, and both of them are knocked out. And he comes to and didn't know that the the play had gone on. Like had no clue. Out cold, just completely them. gone. Yeah, obviously he was done for the game, but and for for a while after. But yeah, same thing. Just knocked him completely out. Was done. Wow. He was he was done. Yeah. So so that brings us then to senior year. You've you've now um, starting starting. And what's that feeling like as you're, what, 21? How old are you at that point? Uh, around, yeah, around, 21. around 21. So 21, now you're playing from small city Brockville, Ontario, mm. to you're playing in a, a stadium that has almost as many people in that stadium that's yeah. in Brockville. <laughs> so yeah, the whole population. You know what I mean? It's... <laughs> What's yeah. that? What's that like? The adrenaline that you're feeling to, through all this? To me, when I finished, even though we, it's weird. This is probably not good to say, but like, <clears throat> when, even though we lost that game, I walked off and I was just so proud of myself because uh, just everything I went through in, in, in college and university, I went through some stuff. Yeah. <clears throat> For example, I didn't bring this up, but I got, um, and I don't think I've ever told you this, but I got yeah. uh, um, my grade nine year, I got caught for, uh, what's the word, plague, plague? Plagiarism. 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 Yeah. Kind of a long story, but, like, I was kind of homesick, and I was writing a paper. And uh, after I wrote this paper, this was for, for summer school, I was I got to go home and see my family, and I was, like, really rushing this paper. This is at, sorry, Virginia? Virginia. Okay. And I was really yeah, yeah. rushing this paper, and, like, I'm sure everyone's been done this before, but, like, I, I wanted to finish this paper, and I was kind of rushing it, and I saw, like, a a paragraph and I kind of copy and pasted a paragraph I put in there and I try to put it in my own words. I try to switch it around, put it in my own words, but yeah. I didn't do a good job of it. It so <laughs> happened at the time. <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't do a good job of it. What, you got caught. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm not, 
I'm not gonna like sit here and no, no, no. Yeah, yeah. lie to you guys. I'm trying no. to be real. As no, I appreciate. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, and um, I mean, most teachers would like the teacher I had. Let's let's be real. He was kind of a wait. He wait, was kind wait, of a wait, dick. Yeah. There oh. it is. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You had your moment. He could have warned me. Like he didn't give me a warning. He was just like. So there's some teachers in university that take it really yeah. serious. They're just hardcore uh, scholars, whatever you want to call yeah. it. Yeah. And he saw this on there, and he just he didn't even talk to me. He just went. He put he right away. He he um, to took dean? it to the yeah took it to the dean right away. And like basically, this caused my life to complete um, so much stress. Yeah. For it was I think it took, the trial took like two or three years. So for two or three years, I wasn't sure if I was going to be kicked out of school or not over this whoa and i was trying to maintain my grades and doing all this stuff but always in the back of my mind there was a chance i was gonna get kicked out of school two or three years yeah it went on it went on like two or three years so i guess the the next question is is that do you think the trial went on long enough to see how well your playing career was gonna be because if you were a shit player you think that trial would have been brought up Mm -hmm. a little bit quicker and uh, you know what he's not valuable to us there's a scholarship gone. Yeah, I mean, do you ever think of that? I mean, uh, these sports programs definitely have some pull. That's all I'm going to yeah. say. Yeah, they were maybe delaying the process because yeah. they're like, the policy yeah. is the policy. Yeah, but we're going to let it slide. Yeah, and postpone the trial. Yeah, I yeah. mean, it went so yeah. long, and um, I wow. was like really mentally not good for a while. Do and and then yeah. I started to, like the concussions thing. So once yeah. I once you get like one a couple of concussions, they start to come a lot easier. And I started getting a bunch of concussions during my first couple of years. And like, yeah. I went through some really rough times with the concussions and yeah. like, I thought about like quitting and, yep. <clears throat> but like, um, I even had a point in time where like, I got a concussion after the North Carolina game, we played North Carolina and, uh, like my position coach and usually I wouldn't like to call people out, but like this guy, he deserves to be called out. Um, after that game, and I was concussed. I was still, like, kind of out of it, and I was depressed and sad. Yeah. The next day at practice when they were doing, like, walkthroughs, the coach came up to me. He's like, <clears throat> if you get one more if you get one more concussion, get ready to do the beep. I'm not oh, going to f*** with you anymore. Oh, no way. Yeah, like, he's okay. like, he literally said that to me. He's like, get one more concussion, I'm going to put, I'm going to pinky. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to let you, uh, like, I'm, I'm going to move you to a different spot. Like, and you're not going to oh, play wow. defensive anymore because, like, you're not reliable. This, like, I was like. 18, 19, telling a kid that if you get one more concussion, like I can control whether I get concussed or not. Just abuse of <clears> authority <throat> at that point. Yeah, some of these coaches, yeah. like, uh, part of me has a, I understand from a certain extent because these coaches are under tremendous pressure. These coaches get fired left, right, and center, and they're, they have to perform as well as players. But yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, you're the adult. You should never say that to a player. It's not going to make yeah. me want to play harder for you. It's not like you can avoid <clears throat> The concussion either i mean it's not like you're spearing somebody yeah you know what i mean it's it'd be different if you're if you said you know trent you're a dirty player yeah you're clotheslining every person that you come across i mean there's a difference with that so basically like i wasn't really recovering from these concussions and I, they would just send me like i would miss yeah. one game they send me out again and i would get hit again in the head and then we get concussed again so i was going yeah. through these concussions i was going through a coach who didn't even want me to play for him I was wow. going through the trial, in which I maybe kicked out of school. I was also trying to adapt to a whole new, um, like society, basically, yeah. like yeah. the 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 fraternities and sororities, all that stuff, and <clears throat> all these new people and all these new like everything's just so different. <clears throat> and I just kind of yeah. hung in there, and I just kept I kept doing my thing, and eventually I started. So like after that that Rose Bowl game against UCLA, even though we lost, I was just so proud. Uh, of myself for everything I've been through to, to be able to start and yeah. and we were on ESPN one and I, we ended up like playing Notre Dame like a couple games after on ESPN one wow like playing against Notre Dame on ESPN one yeah and they actually like they actually gave me a shout out like Trent Corning from Brockle this guy's a freak blah 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 and no like way. to cool. me like <clears throat> anything that happened from that point like I was like pretty happy with every with with yeah. what I've done eventually the trial came out I beat the trial. <clears throat> Yeah, um, <laughs> it, 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 I can get into the trial Should if you, you want. This? Yeah, let's talk about that. I mean, it's kind of yeah. it's kind of funny. Yeah, but I, like yeah, I think we should. If talk about Virginia that, hears right. about this, they're 
I mean, it's too late. I got my degree. You know what? <laughs> it's too late. You're a sociology major or uh, major now, and can they take it back? No, I don't think so. <laughs> no. <laughs> right. so, Someone's uh, gonna tag you. See it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the so full- ha- hashtag University of Virginia. <laughs> Get <No>. it. <laughs> um. So I was working with like a. So after like I was going through a lot, and I was working with a sports psychologist, which was one of the coolest things I've ever yeah. done, and it. Like my mindset and like the way I think now is deeply shaped by uh, this sports psychologist I worked with in university. Yeah. Sports psychology is so interesting; it's unbelievable, yeah. Yeah. and I'm really interested in like psychology and sociology. But um, basically, what we did was the sports psychology psychologist I was working with was so smart. Like this guy was yeah. super smart, and he was like Trent, um, you know, you were going through a lot at this time. You were stressed. You were depressed. We're gonna um, we're gonna file that you were uh, like psychologically unwell <laughs> for for the reason why you um, bingo. <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's legitimate. So he was basically uh, a defense lawyer. Yes, this guy was <laughs> so brilliant. smart. Like brilliant. Yeah. When it yeah. comes to psychology, yeah. like it's a lot of years of school, and these guys are smart. And this guy was like sports psychology is like it's really dope. Like it's, I love sports psychology. And this guy was like he found this. I mean, he found a loophole. Found a loophole. I mean, yes, I was like homesick. Yeah. He basically like used the fact that I was homesick and yeah. I wasn't in the right se- yeah. frame of mind to, and that's why like my intent was not to cheat. Like I never intent to cheat. I wasn't trying to cheat. Yeah. I was just trying to finish the paper. Like I've done this before. I just didn't do a good job and I was yeah. rushing it. And I was he basically basically like I was psychologically unwell. So like, I was like a <laughs> like a psych ward <laughs> patient. Like they ro- did you roll you in in yeah. the jacket? I had the Hannibal the mask Hannibal on. Mask. <laughs> 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 he wasn't well. Can he go play football now? I don't think we could actually physically fit him in a straight jacket. I don't no, think we no. make him in his size. <laughs> so, so the sports psychologist, your AKA defense lawyer, uh, <laughs> gets you off on all charges. Yeah. Um, but I'm, I'm a firm, firm believer in Karma. the fact that you can. No, 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 no. <laughs> Karma too. Karma. Oh, please. Another concussion. Uh, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, your concussions were because of this. No, um, I'm a firm believer in that as humans, we're going to make mistakes and, and you own up to them at some point in your life, but you move and you learn and you and you grow as a person. And, and am I correct to say that you didn't do any more plagiarizing? In your no, university, career. the worst thing I did after that, I remember one one night of drinking, I took a uh, what's it called a porta pot, porta potty. Oh Jesus! Yeah, I took one of them, I picked it up, and I threw it in the middle of the road one night. <laughs> picked a porta potty. Yeah, I picked up an entire porta potty. There was probably somebody in the porta potty too. And I <laughs> threw it in the middle of the road, and my friends are like, "Why did you do that?" I'm like, I don't know. I'm drunk. <laughs> <laughs> Some guy from that exact university would be like, "Bet that was him." Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, first of all, anybody listening, you know the size of a porta potty. They're like, yeah, four Dude. feet by four feet or yeah, yeah. whatever they are. They and pick them up with machines. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Drop them off with <laughs> four clips. <laughs> Here you are. They, did they have some funny nickname for you after that? No, my nickname was uh, <laughs> Cornballs. Cornballs, <laughs> <laughs> because like I was, like when I first went into uh, Virginia, like there's the di- there was different rules, and like yeah. if I'm being honest with you, like yeah. I wasn't the smartest football player. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm just gonna be real with you. Yeah, I, wasn't, yeah. I was very athletic, and like if you got yeah. my way, like I'm probably gonna toss you or I'm yeah outrun you. But when it comes to like actual football IQ, like I played with guys that were way less talented than me in, in high school. Yeah, and um, usually when you play with like when you play with guys the same talent as you, you got to be smart. Like, yeah, you can't yeah. just <clears throat> use your uh, physical ability. So yeah. I wasn't the smartest, and I wasn't very familiar with like plays and like all these different defensive schemes and whatnot. And yeah, I messed up a lot. And uh, the coach started calling me yeah. cornballs because my last name was Corny, so he called me cornballs. He just thought it was like a oh, silly. the coach gave that to you. Yeah. Oh wow, <laughs> coaches were ruthless. Like I was, yeah. I, I don't want to get too into it because I actually liked my coach, even though. He would call me some crazy sh- stuff. Yeah. But you want I, me to? Yeah. Crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I just hold this for the next minute. Um, I actually so, really liked him, but like some of the stuff yeah. he said uh, is crazy. <laughs> like, you shouldn't be able to say that. No, no. Yeah. 
I, I, I'm sure there's still some coaches like that. I think it's changing a bit, I think. But uh, certainly... Does it certainly have to, that. though? Can it not be like that? <laughs> Man, I don't know. There's Maybe there's some crazy line. stuff. There's a fine line, though, with when you're... Yeah. Especially coaching kids. It's I found that when you're coaching these impressionable youth, yeah. it certainly mattered when you when you would see certain coaches that would use lively language or they would get aggressive with them or yell at them. And it wasn't the, wasn't the, I didn't see that it was effective with how kids responded mm. to that. Not kids. Like, no, I agree with that. Yeah. Like young, young kids. Now you're, I mean, you're a, basically a man at this point, you're in your twenties and, and uh, so it's a little, a little bit different there. So you, so you're going through this. Let's, let's get back to these concussions. First concussion was, sorry, first, first game. game ever yeah. for Virginia. How, and you might not even, and I already actually know the answer to this, but roughly, number-wise, how many concussions did you have in your years at Virginia? So, by definition, yeah. a concussion is, is said to have, if you have any symptoms, it's technically a concussion. So, if you hit your head... If you get headaches, that's a concussion. If you get blurry vision, that's a concussion. If you feel off in any type of way, it's technically a concussion, right? Yeah. So, like, based off that, like, a lot of people have had a lot of concussions. So, I first, yeah. I, first, I want to state there are different levels of con- concussions. You yeah. could have a mild or you could have, like, a really bad one and you can get in a car accident, traumatic brain injury, right? Yeah. So, after I found that I don't know the exact hit, but after I got one of these concussions – they started happening a lot more frequent, a lot easier. Yeah. Like medium hits to the head, it started getting blurry vision. <clears throat> and I'm not even kidding. Like the amount of times I had blurry vision from hits, it was like yeah. 50. Yeah. So technically yeah, I had like 50 <clears throat> concussions, but like I don't yeah. want to – but I really didn't though. Like they weren't bad. They were just like blurry well, vision for like – I would get it between 15 to 30 minutes of blurry vision Yeah. from, from when I get hit in the head. And sometimes I get – Mild to medium headaches in the evening. I remember you telling me a story of running. <clears throat> I think it was after, I think halftime or something. You told me a story of running in through the dome into the field, but your vision wasn't there. Yeah. And you said at one point that you were focusing on the jersey in front of you. Yeah. Which is your teammate, but yeah. you're running in. Is it fair to say that that was a pretty common? experience then through your university football yeah so basically this is what happened i got to the point so i had a dream and and i was i'm not even kidding i was literally willing to die for that dream my dream was i wanted to play at the highest level of football possible i wanted to be in the nfl i wanted yeah. to be a professional athlete that's what was my dream yeah and my dream I realized that my dream was slowly closing. As I got more concussions, you get to a certain number, and the doctor was like, yeah, you're done. Like, I can't let you play. Like, it's I can't let you play. Yeah. You had 10 documented concussions. I can't let you play. <clears throat> yeah. So basically what happened was I knew this, and I talked to a couple of players on the team, and, like, some of, like, the more crazy guys on the team, like probably the guy that would hit his head before the game, <laughs> he, he, one of those guys, like similar guys, he came up to me and was like, man, I can I get concussions all the time. I just don't see anything. I'm like, what? Yeah. He's like, just don't see anything, and you you'll be fine. You can keep playing. I'm like, are you serious? Like, I like because there's a thing that, around the time that it was big that was a uh, oh, second impact syndrome or something where you get okay. if you get two concussions in the game, you technically can die. Yeah, so okay. if I get a concussion yeah. and then get another concussion, you can technically die because your head's already like messed up, and then you hit head like another concussion, like second second impact yeah. pack syndrome, I think it's called. Yeah. Where, like, you can die. So, like, that, that used to always really scare me. So once I get a concussion, I'd be like, no, I don't want to die. So, like, the, the guy that was telling you that you're taking <clears throat> advice from that's hitting his head yeah. on the locker, <laughs> was that guy, did you find it weird that he's talking to you, but his eyes were over here because he couldn't focus <laughs> on you? <laughs> did you? Did you ever question that? I mean. <laughs> <laughs> life, life lesson. <laughs> well... <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry to say it, but I, I took his advice. Yeah. Oh, did so, you really? Yeah. I so t- you didn't say anything. So from that moment, there's a point in time. Um, it was around my my right before I started my my second last year, where I was the, a solid backup, where I would get rotation, I would get in and get some minutes. Yeah. 
And, but I was also playing special teams. So all my concussions came from special teams, like kickoff. When you're running like full speed down and you're hit someone, that's when they come. Not when I was playing defensive end. Yeah. <clears throat> so that I, I came to the realization that if I keep getting concussions, I'm not going to be able to play anymore. They're going to not let me play. Yeah. And my dream is too strong for that. So what I decided to do was every time I got, got a concussion, I would not say anything. I would just continue playing. And there was many games <clears throat> where I couldn't see any – like I couldn't see well on the field. I couldn't even read the scoreboard. And I would just be like, all right, let's just keep going. Like it's going to go away eventually. Let's just try to not make any mistakes out there. Yeah. Like, like my identity was shaped around being Trent, the football player, and I wasn't going to let yeah. – I wasn't going to let anything – and I knew the repercussions. I knew that like, there's a chance like I could get really badly hurt or see effects f- from it for the rest of my life. But I didn't care. I mean, you know, when you're young, like you, yep, you just, you do stupid things. No, oh, yeah. Did, you, did you have any close calls for a potential second concussion on the field? Or I think I've gotten two concussions before. Oh, and Jesus. like, and I, I remember like even I remember had like inter- internal dialogue when I got like another concussion on, the, on it. And I'm like. Second, like I, 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 like my yeah. mindset, like just switched, and I became like an absolute, yeah. like a savage. Where it's like, yeah, like second impact syndrome, like that, that ain't shit. Like, it's not taking me down. <laughs> like I don't <laughs> care. Give me another on one. Me. Like yeah. I came to the point where it's like you're literally gonna have to like. I played a full season. Listen to this. I played a full season with a torn labrum, fully torn labrum. Yeah. I went in like halfway through the season, and I'm like, yeah, like it was a female trainer. I was like, yeah, I think there's something wrong with my shoulder, and she's like. No, you're fine. Like, foam roll it. I'm like, okay. So I just foam rolled it. I'm like, no, this is not doing anything. And the year I got looked at, fully torn labrum, like, fully torn, like, all the way around. Wow. And I played a full season with a fully torn labrum. And it was like, like, it was very painful. But, like, um, that, was, that was Winnipeg, though, right? No, this Wasn't was Virginia. It? Oh, that was in Virginia? Yeah. Oh, I wore, like, a collar, like, a big ass collar on my arm. Yeah. And, um, Believe it or not, I wow. got my other shoulder looked at, and um, they're like, why do you want to get your other shoulder looked at? And I have a – my subscap tendon is totally cut. Yeah. It's totally submerged. I don't have a tendon there. I tore – like, random – Your I subscapula tore, doesn't exist. I don't have a subscap tendon <laughs> in my right shoulder. <laughs> and, like, my – they also found out that my humerus is cracked, and my bicep's not even attached properly in this right arm. So a lot of times, like, when I pose on, like, pictures, my left arm's, like, bigger because yeah. this bicep's not even attached properly up here. And, like, this all happened from football. And I just kind of, like, played through it. Like, the football <laughs> m- mindset is, like, that's why, like, I'm at the place now where it's, like, I, like, I really believe, like, being injured is a mindset. Yeah. <laughs> I really do. Like, unless you're, like, broken back and you can't move, like, yeah. I really feel like you're only injured if you think you're injured. Because, like, <laughs> I'm in there, like, benching with a, t- like, my tent. I tore my pec and I'm st- my my bench is stronger than it's ever been. Right now, yeah, I've never like my bench is as strong as it's ever been. I've tore my pec multiple times, and I'm missing a subscap, torn labrum, <laughs> and it's like it's just to me it's like all like a mindset. Like if you think you're injured, it's the same as like <clears throat> like I really like like uh, people who are disabled, uh, yeah. like their mindsets. Like a lot of them have really like, inspiring mindsets. It's like you, you're only disabled if you like think you're disabled, right? Yeah. Like they think they're capable, but you see them as disabled, but they're capable. They think they're capable. Yeah. I think it's, I think everything is about mindset. And like when I was working with that sports psychologist, like I really recommend like high level athletes working with sports psychologists. It's crazy sure. how good it helped, how much yeah. it helps. So they, they had that at university, but did Winnipeg? No. They didn't have that. No. I was seeing one weekly, like weekly in, at, at uh, Virginia. Virginia. Yeah. There's a lot more. Obviously, a lot more money and sponsorship that goes into um, into university football in the states. I mean, it's yeah. Well, also the the games, like the stadiums, um, have, oh. they sell out. Yeah. So it's not the same thing at all. Sixty thousand people times yeah. thirty dollars a yeah. seat, whatever yeah, it is. Exactly. It's uh, it's a lot. Yeah, for sure. So so fair to say fifty say fifty concussions, but <laughs> what? <laughs> it sounds bad. Let's just. <laughs> so, Man. I like to say, like, what do you guys think? For a guy who's 50 concussions, like, I'm, I'm still pretty cognitive. <laughs> am, I, am I the smartest 50 concussion guy you've talked to? I think I, you're doing all right, man. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I couldn't yeah. have tell. I couldn't tell. <laughs> um, so, well, let's kind of elaborate on that because there's, there's a lot more to it than that. So yeah. you have this at your university. 
you get through that. Now it's time for uh, pro scouts yeah. that are looking at you. So now take us back to to that and what what that was like, what the scouts were talking about, what your coaches were talking about, and maybe lead that into let's let's go from there into talking about uh, some of uh, the stuff with the Jets, the okay. New York Jets and the NFL and that. Let's. So what was that like? Okay, your, well. I'll make it brief. P- pretty much, um, I was actually projected to be a late dra- draft pick, possibly free agent guy, yeah. guess, to be signed. That's what I was projected to be. But um, and I had amazing numbers at my like pro day for like my forty yard dash. I ran a four five forty. I jumped thirty and a half inch on the vertical. I did twenty uh, thirty four reps of two twenty five. My numbers were like off the charts for my position, like the best. I had the best numbers. Yeah. But what happened was. I remember my agent like texting me one day. He's like, "Yeah, like all these teams are interested. They all like really interested." And all of a sudden, like a, a week later, he messaged me again. He's like, "Yo, why didn't you tell me you had seven documented concussions?" So basically, these co- yep. when it comes to these scouts, man, they it's crazy. They they know everything. They'll talk mm-hmm. to like the janitor at your at your at university. Like, yeah, have you, have you ever have you ever talked talk to Trent? Like, how was he? Was he polite with you? Like when he, when he came in, like, was he a good guy? Like, what do you, they yeah. really, they do their homework, these scouts. And like, you would you have to be a fool to think they're not going to see your medical history. Yeah. The torn labrum, they had the shoulder, like this guy's mangled. We're not going to invest on a special teams player. The guy who has eight, yeah. eight uh, documented concussions. So like, I had no chance of playing in the NFL. Like from after that, from that, once they saw my medical history, no chance. You, you had the, the physical abilities yeah other than concussions i got a v- invite to like multiple teams for rookie mini camp yeah but i'm not even like most guys in this position would be like yeah like they would brag and be like yeah like i went to mini camp with the jets like almost made it blah 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 like yeah. i'm not even going to sit here and like be fake with you guys like no, i was yeah. a pylon yeah they literally had me as a guy for their their uh draft picks yeah, to to practice on because like the the main the vets guys they they came in like a week or two later, so they yeah. wanted to get the uh, the draft picks accumulated in their system, and yeah. they needed basically pylons me to fill in those spots for them to get accumulated with the yeah. system their system. And how long did that go on for with the Jets? Uh, it was like a like a three day thing. Yeah. It was a cool experience. I got to like experience like what it was would be like like an NFL player, but I'd be a. F- like yeah. a lot of guys, they they go to these camps, they do these rookie mini camps, and they're same position as me, and they're like, they like post that picture on like Instagram, like yeah, like I was with the the Jets yeah. back in the day. No, you weren't. Like yeah, yeah. I I I can't stand that stuff because you're 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 uh, demi- uh so we're diminishing. Yeah. Like the guys that actually made it, like the guys so, that actually worked and made it, you're taken away from like their accomplishment yeah. by you saying that you made it when you didn't make it. So in a sense, it's like. <clears throat> a tryout, but it's not actually a tryout. Like you're not being yes. scouted to go on the team. It was a tryout. Technically it was a tryout, but I guarantee you the coach was, had no intent in signing me. Right. Zero. Okay. I could literally like sack the quarterback every play, make every play possible. There was still probably one sign me. Interesting. Was that when, <clears throat> was it Sanchez was quarterback at that uh, point? Do you remember who that was? Uh, it, in that time frame? I can't remember. Um, so, so you do the mini camp and, and you and I have talked about that before you were, like you said before, you're, you're this pylon and yeah. like, I mean, I'm not, you're like, I'm just standing there. It's stupid. It's there's no point to it, but more of the, just the experience of doing it. And right. also you, you've said before, like your mindset was that it's all or nothing. Like I'm going into this, yeah. I'm going to play period. Yeah. So how did that transition happen to then you notifying, the CFL for eligibility for the draft. How, how, what was that transition? For so they, th- what happens is you, the CFL basically drafts guys based off of like, they su- they bas- draft guys based off of are they is this guy going to play in the NFL? If he's going to play in the NFL, we're not going to draft him high. So like to be honest with you, I probably would have been drafted higher, but they they weren't sure if I was going to make the NFL or not. Yeah. So that's why I was ninth. If like. Usually the guys that get drafted the highest in the CFL are the guys that were there, like no chance of playing in the NFL, but they see them as being a good CFL player. Yeah. So what, um, talking about your time with the Jets, did they pay you for that? 
Uh, Did they pay for that? No. Mini they pay for the trip, like the hotel and like food and the flight. And then I know you got some merch from it. <laughs> you got, you got some merch, yeah. I don't, I, don't, I didn't even get a single picture. No. No. <laughs> so no pictures. <laughs> no pictures. No like, pictures. I'm not. You're not a fanboy. I, ha- I no. have buddies that like yeah. went to training camp with like the Red Blacks and went to training camp and they're like. They're like putting their like Tinder Tinder bios and stuff like yeah, was red backs, <laughs> red backs linebacker. Like, bro, you never played for them. Like, there's so many guys out there that will melt like in, in anything, any profession. I'm sure you guys see oh, it. Oh yeah. yeah, guys yeah, will yeah. just like you got like if, yeah. if a real estate guy, like you know if he's legit or not. Like, yeah, you're not gonna. But like someone who doesn't do real estate, I could probably like make up some stuff. Like, yeah, I like, sold right. this, this, that. Yeah, yeah. In my industry, it's like the <clears throat> the top awards that get given at the brokerages every year. It's like yeah. top 100 in your brokerage. So they'll like post their pictures up, be like, top 100. It's like, you're number 99 in your office. You've done one sale all yeah. year. Yeah. <laughs> Congratulations. Yeah. I just, it's yeah. the same thing. I, like, I've got all sorts of awards and accreditations. I don't put them anywhere. I don't talk about them. Yeah. It's like, whatever. Yeah. Your actions speak, your track record speaks. Yeah. No, for yeah. sure. So, so then you get. You get drafted by Winnipeg. Yeah. Let's be honest here. What is your mindset? Mindset <laughs> thinking. <laughs> I'm going to Winnipeg, yeah. um, Manitoba, and we're playing in in winter. <laughs> Wild. Um, honestly, it just felt good to be wanted. You know, like yeah. a team that actually wants you, where like no one wanted you in the NFL. Like, just it felt, felt good to be wanted by someone. Yeah. So that made me feel good. Um, my so, my experience in the CFL was really good. Like, yeah, they treated me really well. Like the Winnipeg organizations, like they, I haven't been to any other organizations, so I'm obviously biased. But like, they're the best in my opinion. Yeah. The coaching staff, everyone there was great. Like the way it was done. The biggest difference I'd like to say about Division One versus the CFL. Um, is they treat you like an adult when you're a pro- when you're a professional athlete with, in yeah. the CFL. They treat you like an adult. Like you don't want the old like the day of the game. They let you sleep. If you want to sleep all day and then show up the game, you can. Yeah. They don't. They don't. They're not going to baby you if you want to work. Like you honestly don't even have to work out if you don't want to. <clears throat> wow. You do your own workouts. You can like not work out at all. Like you're a professional. You need to get yourself ready. <laughs> what I've found though is that the CFL and I'm a fan of the CFL. Not to knock it at all, but it doesn't seem like they really invest the money into their players like yeah i mean it could training be a lot. facilities and, and yeah i mean our, our yeah, gym was terrible can, can they though do they have the resources it's like the old yeah. like what do they say nba versus women's basketball like the women make yeah. less money well the league makes less money significantly right yeah. so yeah. it wouldn't be the same thing with cfl like they pay what they can but i think I mean, so are the resources i really think so really? what <clears throat> I think you're right. Do you mind getting to that? Like pay scales for them? How does that work for them? Um, yeah, if you're a Canadian, you're going to – so there's a rule in Canadian football where you got to have a certain amount of Canadians on the field at mm-hmm. once because we don't want the league to be just funded by Americans. Yeah. Not necessarily because they're so much better, but um, like a lot of times we get like American coaches and they might just want their American guys. Like there's just biases and whatnot, politics. We want to make it, keep it like a Canadian game. Yep. So you got to have a certain amount of Canadians in the field, which makes Canadians a little more valuable. So Canadians get paid decent amount. Like, yeah. like one of the, the biggest stereotypes is like Canadian football players don't get paid well. And yeah. I don't like that stereotype because uh, like I got paid like really well. I was getting like, around a hundred thousand dollars for six months yeah like which is really good and i could work another job for the other six months so that it, i only have to be there like the six months of the season but then i another six months at home i could work another job yeah yeah so like for me like coming out of university and making like close to a hundred grand mm, yeah i mean it's not a million dollars not like nfl money no but, no but still but uh like to me it was a i loved it like it was incredible and uh i mean yeah there are some guys that get paid like very yes, little, no. like maybe like I think the minimum is like fifty four thousand. Yeah, which that, I mean, for some people, like for six months, it's not even that bad. Yeah. I think I think part of the problem with that though is that you would have to find a career to supplement the rest of that income that you can do within that six month period, though, yeah. right? Yeah. And that's I think that's the challenge of that's it is challenge. that you like really coach and stuff. Yeah, what what can you do? 
to make money for six months. Uh, so, so you get into the CFL, yeah. you get drafted. Um, what was what was draft day, the actual draft day itself like for you? Father's there. Yeah, I was on TV, and yeah. uh, like I got the phone call. My family was there. Were you in Brockville at the time? Yeah. Yeah. It was really cool, and uh, like my family was there. I had some friends there, and they were all really happy. And um, yeah. to me, it was just like the most. The best part was just seeing my family how happy and proud they were. Yeah. Like to me, yeah. I I knew I was gonna be drafted, and yeah. I and I was happy to be drafted. But like it was just. It, it was great to see, like, make them proud, you know? Yeah. Hmm. What, with, obviously, the concussions being a huge factor in um, in the NFL decision-making, how was that, or was that even a factor with the CFL? That's a good question. So this goes into what you said. Um, the resources aren't the same, you know? <laughs> They're not going to have the money to look into every little thing. I'm sure. Yeah. I don't know if they saw the medical history. I don't Is that know. right? Like, so at, at no point did that <laughs> concussions right? yeah. come up. I yeah. think he's good. Show up there, we're like missing an arm. <laughs> They're like, yeah, he'll do. <laughs> I didn't know he was missing an arm. <laughs> Jeez. Well, we missed that. <laughs> like, so so did was that actually not part of the conversation for you? They didn't ask me about concussions. <laughs> oh man. Like, yeah. Don't know. Don't tell. And I'm not even joking. Like. This whole process, yeah. I knew, like, my mindset was, like, let's try, like, this sounds yeah. really bad, but, like, let's try to, like, let's just try to, like, enjoy this experience and let's try not to, like, die out there. Wow. That was, like, my mindset. Yeah. That's wild, man. Like, so, I wanted to I wanted to be this character. I had this character in my mind, Trent the football player. Yeah. And, like, I'm not going to lie, like, as a young guy, like, I really fed into that role and that character. For sure. And I got a lot from it. Like when in Winnipeg, they treat football players really well. And I had a lot yes. of fun in Winnipeg. And a lot of people, um, I met a lot of really good people because I was yeah. a football player. And I felt amazing. And I, I'm i a firm believer in like, unless you're a sociopath, like you got to earn that confidence. Yeah. I, I'm a, My whole life, I've always wondered like what I was in search for. And I've like, I finally realized what I'm in search for. And that's like real genuine confidence. Like to be able to walk in a room and, and have that confidence, and I I'm, I finally feel like I'm a confident man, and I feel competent to be able to do m- multiple things. But like you got to earn that confidence. Like for example, yeah. let's say I I've done nothing my whole life. Yeah. Let's say I'm I'm on this podcast. I've done nothing my whole life. Like you, you wouldn't be on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> they only take true. winners. <laughs> <laughs> winners only. Winners. We call it the winners couch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, and I just felt like I needed to earn that confidence and like. Yeah. You earn that by accomplishments, right? Yeah. Like, um, it's Mark, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, talking to Mark, like, I can just... Oh, is this, this shut off? No, it's good. Oh. I think the AC shut uh, off. Talking oh, yeah. to Mark, <laughs> I can just, like, feel, like, the confidence when he speaks and all those accomplishments and everything he's done. Like, he's very well-spoken, very confident man. I can tell that. Yeah. And he's worked us really hard to develop that you know, if yeah. you didn't have those accomplishments, let's say you didn't have any of those accomplishments, you're not going to be the same person. Like, no, y- y- you are who you are because of what you accomplished and all those yeah. things you've been through. And in my mind, I needed to go through a serious CFL experience and say I've done it yeah. in order to develop that confidence, even if I continue to get concussions. Like, in order for me to be the yeah. character and the person I wanted to be, I need to do this. Because if I'm not, then I'm just like, tr- like, it's, it may sound bad, but like my whole identity is kind of surrounded by like I'm a football player. Like I played professional football. Yeah. For the rest of my life, I can say that, and like I have like pride in that. Yeah. And like, and I, and nobody's gonna question it when they see you. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. mm. Makes sense. Yeah, he played. Um, and I have no regrets. Like I'll I'll play. Yeah. I, I have no regrets. How many years did you play? I played three years. And like I said, I played many games like in the CFL. I remember like it got really bad to the point where like I was actually making plays and I couldn't see at all out there. Yikes. And I was like, this is like, 
Like this is like a movie. This is like a like this is something out of a movie right now. Like that's that's next level, man. Making yeah. plays basically blind. Yeah, I was literally couldn't like I, I'm not even exaggerating. Like people may yeah. think like this guy's just trying to sound hard on this po- on this podcast. Yeah, just trying to sound like I'm not even kidding. Like this, we this we have a happen. reputation of <laughs> just bringing on hard winners here. So. Yeah, one hundred percent. So you're going through that. You're obviously concussed. You start experiencing more symptoms during this time. Yeah. So let's get into the, let's get, I guess maybe before we go there, let's, let's talk a little bit about you and I've talked about the experience of you saying to the training um, or the athletic coordinator, I forget who it was about the concussions, about side effects that you were having and you were having this discussion with them and nothing was really done. It was your. It was a contract year. Yeah. For you, so walk us through that. You're you're experiencing concussion symptoms. You have a long history, which maybe they didn't know. Yeah. <laughs> maybe they did, but you're experiencing this throughout your whole professional career. Yeah. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that is part one of our two part series. Hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to follow, share, like. Tell everybody about us. Noble conversations. Till next time.